The political left would rather burn this country down to the ground rather than let Donald Trump be president. It really is amazing. They hate Donald Trump so much. They hate him more than they love America, which actually means they don't love America. This violence, the summer of 2020 and beyond, glorified and celebrated. We all know that this was law-breaking and awful, but that's how much, that's how twisted things have become. There have been so many episodes over the years. One of the worst before this, Christine Blasey Ford. When that fool of a woman came forward with her hazy, nonspecific allegations, she would have been laughed out of any police department, right? 40 years or so later, she comes stumbling in, yet the whole nation is forced to sit there and watch this. And again, it's celebrated. You know, when the Supreme Court draft ruling was leaked, at first I wasn't particularly offended or bothered. I thought, well, look, the White House leaks, the Congress leaks, the Pentagon leaks, the Supreme Court, don't they leak? Apparently they don't. It's never happened. And the more I thought about it, yeah, this is another attempt, a desperate attempt to burn this country down to the ground. We are a nation that is failing, totally. And they know Joe Biden is not going to get them to the finish line. So this is a Hail Mary pass. You've seen the uh, protests so far. Uh, Democrats are excited. They are riled up. This is good for the base. See how they think? You see what they talk about? Election cycles. And by the way, this is a polite protest. We encourage these kinds of protests. But what about this stuff? What about this ugliness? Next, that's everywhere. This is, uh, this is real. They want a repeat of what we went through two years ago. Now, I actually don't think they're going to get it, but we'll see. Because right now we are a fallen country. We have no border. We are impotent overseas. We have an inflation rate that is reminiscent of the third world. Donald Trump talked about making America great again. Right now, I just want America to remain intact. And I don't know if that's going to happen. If I gotta be really, it's always darkest before the dawn. Isn't that what they say? This is a dark hour right now. And our so-called leader, Joe Biden, he's utterly compromised and hapless. We all know that. And I think he might not even have a soul, actually. There's something fundamentally corrupt about this individual. Now, why do I say that? You know the state of our country. Do you remember the pledge he made, the solemn pledge, and what did he put into it? Today, on this January day, my whole soul is in this, bringing America together, uniting our people, uniting our nation. Well, what does it say if his whole soul was really in it? He has no soul. He has no soul. There's something empty about him. These were solemn promises, and he spoke them to everybody. We can see each other not as adversaries, but as neighbors. We can treat each other with dignity and respect. We can join forces, stop the shouting, and lower the temperature. Now, you've seen him yell his head off a million times and shame on you and Bull Connor this and all that stuff. But again, I think this was even worse than all of that. The volume was lower, but look at what he called all of us. What are the next things that are going to be attacked? Because this mega crowd is really the most extreme political ex organization that's existed in American history. He's talking about us Ex in American history, extremists. Why don't you call us deplorables? Really, that's kind of what you, you want to do, right? Problem with Joe, one of his many problems, he's a snob. He is. He doesn't like us. He likes Washington. He likes the elites. Look at how he just got a big kick out of it when jokes were made about the sorry state of the country. He loved it. Sitting there in his tuxedo, he's the center of attention. He never had it so good. But he is compromised. And he's not that powerful because the President of the United States is actually subservient 
to this idiot, AOC. The political left, the far left, and Joe has no political soul, at least we can, we all know that. He's beholden to the far left. They're the power. They're dictating everything. And then there are some other matters. There's Russia, there's China, all that crazy stuff that was in that laptop. We still don't know the full story. And what about that laptop, by the way, huh? You know, the new czar of misinformation, fighting it, doesn't believe the laptop is real. She actually said that. She said a lot of wild things. This is uh, Miss Jankowitz. They want to put her in charge of uh, judging what's disinformation and misinformation. Critical race theory has become one of those hot button issues that uh, the Republicans and, and other, you know, disinformers um, who are engaged in disinformation for profit, frankly, there are plenty of, you know, media outlets that are making money off of this too, have, have seized on. And I live in Virginia uh, and in Loudoun County, that's one of the areas um, where people have really honed in on this topic. Yeah, why did they hone in on this topic? Because of crazy, critical race theory spawned books like this, the anti-racist baby book, and a lot of other things. Critical race theory is not a myth, it's a real thing. Why don't you go ask your, uh, your favorite soldier in the Biden administration? And I personally find it offensive that we are accusing the United States military, our general officers, our commissioned, non-commissioned officers of being, quote, woke or something else because we're studying some theories that are out there. That was started at Harvard Law School years ago, and it proposed that there were laws in the United States, antebellum laws prior to the Civil War, that led to uh, a power differential with African Americans that were three-quarters of a human being when this country was formed. And then we had a civil war and emancipation proclamation to change it. And we brought it up to the Civil Rights Act in 1964. It took another 100 years to change that. So look it, I do wanna know. And knock yourself out, resign your commission, go work at some community college and have, have, have at it. He's a general in the military. I think he practiced that before a mirror. He should have been thinking about Afghanistan. Anyway, we know that. Back to Joe Biden, I do believe He's compromised, all right? He has this position. He's owned by the left. Um, there are the issues with Hunter, his own vulnerabilities in this realm, and they are very, very serious. And there's also the stuff that we've all seen, and nobody needs any explanation. The inappropriate touching and fondling of women and girls over the years. This is not over yet, folks. This is a real thing. And I believe it's hanging over Joe's head, all right? Now, we've all seen these photographs. We've seen these videos. They are incredibly odd. And these women are still alive, and they still have stories to tell. They're not old. Some of them are in high school. What about them? Because Andrew Cuomo, who is a, not a good governor, <laughs> Andrew Cuomo here in New York State, right? Remember him? Uh, he was governor for like 10 years, and all of a sudden they determined he's a predator. Now they wanted Governor Cuomo out for a lot of reasons, but he's no predator. This, this is one of his accusers, and you're about to witness a moment of sexual harassment according to the Attorney General of New York State. This is what drove him out of office. Where, nice to see you doctor. You make that gown look good. You make that gown look good. You make that gown look good. This was documented sexual harassment. She, that person, is considered a survivor, all right? It's insane. He did nothing when it comes to this stuff. Joe, we all saw, did something, right? If they can do that to Cuomo, they can do it to him. So, he's got the job. He likes that. He likes the stuff that goes with it. He likes being the center of attention. He likes the perks. And he's just gonna go along with the crazy, weirdo, left-wing agenda, which was not who he was for most of his political life because he's compromised and what the hell, huh? How does a person like this get a job in any administration in America? We have solutions that can deliver. We're, gonna, we're actually going to do 100 rules 
this year alone on appliances, just like you asked. We are developing partnerships on how we work together for new building standards, even for sustainable airlines. Who'd have thunk that they'd be all in, but they better be or they're going to be out of here. Now, I just thought that was some crazy substitute teacher in my old school. But that actually is an advisor, the White House National Climate Advisor. Her name is Gina McCarthy. There's real power there, right? She's talking about shutting down airlines. Look, so much is revealed when they look right at us and talk with that sincerity, right? Joe Biden, he thinks nothing of lying. My whole soul is in this, right? But these moments are important. Um, they tell you a lot. One of my favorite moments, and it told us a lot, was Donald Trump when he came down that escalator back in 2015, June 16th of 2015, when he announced for president, everything he said was right then and it's more right now. Our country is in serious trouble. We don't have victories anymore. We used to have victories, but we don't have them. I was actually in the room and that resonated. I thought we were an average country and we could be doing much, much more. This is America. Now, it barely feels like a country. Greatness would be great. I just want to hold it together. What else did he say that day, which was considered totally offensive and outrageous by the fake news? But he was a thousand percent right. When Mexico sends its people, they're not sending their best. They're not sending you. They're not sending you. They're sending people that have lots of problems, and they're bringing those problems with us. They're bringing drugs. They're bringing crime. They're rapists. And some, I assume, are good people. It almost seems quaint right now, those concerns. And those are real concerns. Now, terrorists. Terrorists. We have an open border. Only 23 were detained that we, that we know of. How many got through that we don't know? A terrorists are coming into America. And he's, Joe Biden is just fine with that. The DHS secretary is defending this nonsense. These are dark days. But again, it's always darkest before the dawn, don't they say? Mm -hmm.